one, does, gets away from the other at the 10, cuts back in, he's down at the five and he's got a first down. What a run! Brought down by Tommy Williams, number 33. Marlo Worthen, by all rights, should have been hit 10 yards behind where he was. But instead, he's going to have a first and goal. Picks up eight on the play, first and goal for the Eagles, with the nose of the ball just short of the five-yard line. 8.42 left to go in the first quarter. As Dawson goes out wide right, Harris here at the bottom of your screen at the left. Snap, handoff, Chad Holmes got inside the five to about the four. Ran into that big number 65, Kevin Jenkins in the middle. Jenkins tripped him up. And then he got put, to, put down and put down very good by number 54, Todd Graham. Kevin Jenkins that you mentioned, number 65, is 6'3 and 232 pounds, a senior. I just noticed something interesting. Shane Beatty and Todd Graham, two of the uh, defensive people, are from Kamloops, British Columbia in Canada. Oh, that's a long way to go to for a recruit. Really? Second and goal. Snap. Robinson looks around. He says he'll keep it and take the loss back to the eight. Loss of four on the play. Gunned in there. Who was that man? Number 32, Chris Sherman, out of Matthias, West Virginia. Sophomore who got in there quickly, as a matter of fact. That, I think that was number, I think that was number 92, Robert Wilson, the nose guard, I believe, that came across. He You're right, right. He was right there in the backfield in a hurry. As it is, it's third and goal for the Eagles. Got to punch it in. Whoops, Kenny Robinson says, hold on. We might, might like a timeout. All right. Timeout on the field with seven minutes and 12 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. We'll take a timeout right with them and be back with you right after this. On a third down and goal with the ball just inside the eight-yard line of Glenville State. The Pioneers may be an NAIA team, but they are a good team, period. I don't care what classification they came out of. These guys play some football. Third and goal. Here's the snap. Fake. Robinson keeps it. Wants to get outside. He is outside. He is in the end zone. Well, I don't know who called that play, but Kenny Robinson made sure that he took it in. And the Eagles have got a six points on the board. Just a great option play that time. Faked it to each of his two backs coming up behind him and kept the ball himself. And he did and ran it in for a score. Reed Haley is on to try the extra point. Eric Smith to do the holding. Eagles set. Snap. Down. Up. I think he made it over. He sure did. It's got to be on the porch of the Lupton building. <laughs> and they come back up the field. The score, the Eagles 7, the Pioneers from Glenville State. Nothing back with you with more right after this. Number eight will take a full 30 on this one also. A full 30. Great. This is what football in Georgia is all about. If you have never come out to a game, well, eat your heart out because this is the final home game. You see Eric Smith getting ready to kick again. He has a wind at his back. And he booms this one. It's going to come down, however. Waterfield, no. George at the 4. Out to the 10, the 15. Tries to get outside at the 20. He does and stepped out of bounds at about the 26-yard line. He made one cut too many. Eric Smith had him boxed all on the side anyway. Cal Carter Jr. was the guy that they were uh, talking to, I think, on the opening kickoff. He might have got uh, his bell rung. But he is uh, up and around. Seems to be all right. First and 10, Glenville State, Scott Otis, the quarterback. And if you're just joining us, this guy is 6'5", 235 pounds. Two wide outs left, two to the right, and one lone setback. And it is the draw to the setback, and good gracious, he did not get anywhere. He ran right into big Michael Morris, number 91. He might have got a yard on the play. No, as a matter of fact, he lost the yard is what they're saying. Also went on the tackle number 97, Edward Thomas. Well, they were waiting on that one, weren't they? I tell you, it was, looked like it was diagrammed to them. Derek Bellamy out wide left, Waterfield slot left, Chris George is flank left. 
And they got people all over the place. And now we break ours and go back. And here's Otis rolling, looking. He throws a quick one out into the flat and waiting to get hit. I don't see why else he was waiting except to get hit. Well, the entire defensive back core all came up to help make the tackle. I guarantee you it was completed to Waterfield, number nine. But about the time that he caught the ball, he just kind of stood there. He got three yards on the play, though. A big mound of blue, though, yes. all over there. The yes. Eagle defense found, is swarming. Found him very quickly. High third down. Let's make it third and eight. They put four wide outs now to the right side of the field. Danny Britt sprints back off to this side. Otis takes a snap, rolls right. He looks, he looks. He's got a man open. He, oh, he had it. Chris George had it at the 42-yard line. Paul Carroll, Scott Davis, Marco Bradham, and Danny Britt got there about the same time, and the ball went through his hands. Think you might have heard the footsteps, Fred? Paul Carroll coming off a great game last week, and he just really, really had a fine day. I think he had about 10 solo tackles last week, and picking right up the pace that he had last weekend on this game today. Back to punt Brian Fisher. His second punt of the ball game. Dexter Dawson back at about our 35-yard line. And you can bet that everybody is picking out the man because the Eagles have been known to block a kick. Fisher's kick is going to come down. Oh, I think it hit Alfonso Harris. Did it? Well, I'm not sure, but they are marking it down. Evidently, it didn't. And Chris George picked it up, which means the ball was dead and down right there. High first and ten Eagles at their own 39-yard line. There's part of our crowd today. And we'll be back with more football right after this remain here in the first quarter. 7-0 in favor of the Eagles. Snap. Robinson goes back. He's got a man open. He's got a man breaking. Oh, and he overthrew Chris Wright at about the 35-yard line. Unbelievable. Kenny Robinson had a little bit too much air under that one, but he had Chris Wright breaking down the side and couldn't have, he couldn't have done it any better than that. Gracious. Second down and ten. Well, he works his way back into the huddle. And the wind is really whipping up. Gus caught it. That's what it was. Second down and ten. Snap. Robinson keeps it. Pitches it. Here comes Marlo Warfin at the 40, the 45, at the 50. He turns it up a notch. Oh, and gets knocked out of bounds at about the 34-yard line. Tell you what, I thought he was going to have a face mask as well, but I did not see a flag. I didn't either. That's what I was waiting to see. 27 yards on the play for Marlo Worthen. Stop made by Carlos Parker as he pushed him out of bounds. But once again, a first down. Ball now on the 34-yard line. Brian Prell finally made it. How you doing, guys? Give, give him that tag over there so we don't get two. Okay. First and 10 for the Eagles at the 39 of Glenville State. Snap, Robinson, end the round. Here comes Dexter Dawson. He needs a block. He's got Alfonso Harris out there fighting. They got a flag. Harris, Dawson's going to go in, but we're going to lose it on a flag. I think they're going to say that Alfonso was holding on the play. That one, was, saw, saw that one get was, thrown. Yeah, that one was pretty obvious. I believe that's going to wind up being the call. We'll wait now and catch it. From the referee, everyone seemingly knowing what's going to happen. No, oh, big, yeah. no big jubilation on the touchdown. It's being called back. And we're going to take the walk, are we? Oh. Yeah, Alfonso was fighting with his man out here on the uh, on the sideline, and you can probably see it as he came past that it was a hand-to-hand -hand combat thing. And that's what it is. Ten yards holding. Well, the play worked pretty good, though. Yeah, it looked, looked good as it was developing. Mark it back to the 41. It'll still be first down, but now first and about 17. What about the time you were hollering, he needs a block? I think someone else figured that out there, too, and grabbed. <laughs> All right. Those things do happen. Here's the snap. In the middle goes Chad Holmes. No, it's around the end, and it's Chris Wright. 
at the 40 to 35 and knocked out of bounds on the far sideline. He did not. They say his knee went down at about the 34. So a gain of seven on the play. Dexter Dawson was out on that play, and Tristan Belzer had come in to replace him. But a pickup of about, uh, well, they marked it at the 33, so give him a pickup of eight. And it's now going to be second down at about nine. Harris left, Dawson right. Clock moving with four minutes and 22 seconds left to go. First quarter, Eagles up seven to nothing. Robinson pitches it. Here's Marlo Worthen, tries to cut in. He cuts out. Cuts back at the 30. What a move at the 25 and knocked out of bounds at about the 24-yard line, a nine-yard pickup. He's going to be close to a first down. Very close to a first down. Give him the first down. Well, that's a way to recover from a penalty. Come back and get it all back. Get the first down on the very next play. So his first and 10 Eagles at the 23. Actually, you got to give him nine yards on that, and it was enough to move the six. 4.09 remaining here in the first quarter. Snap. Here's Wright going out. Here's Robinson looking for a man. He's got him. Oh, it's in and out of Fraley's hands at about the three-yard line. Shaft and Fraley and Alfonso Harris both broke loose on that one. And Chris Wright was free out in the uh, flat, too. But again, a little bit of wind. And it took off on him. Second down and 10 for the Eagles. Still at the 23. I'm not sure exactly what Todd Graham was talking to the referee about, but he did catch his attention. Here's the snap. Fake. Robinson pitches it. Here's Wright. Beautiful block by Fraley. Chris Wright heading for the end zone. Did he make it? No, at the one-foot line. Oh, man, and you're, he's got his foot right there. He has got the only two inches from the goal line. Gracious. Give him 23 yards. First and goal to go for the Eagles. Did you see the block? as Shaft and Fraley threw on the cornerback, turned him upside down and inside out. And Chris Wright missed by looking where that ball is at. Can you believe that? Wait till we come up to the line of scrimmage. It, it, the nose of the ball is just short of the goal line. Now out of a power eye formation, Kenny Robinson takes the snap, fakes it, follows his man into the end zone for the touchdown. Well, I'll tell you what, the Eagles have showed they will move the ball on the ground, and Wind is showing it's going to move everything out of his booth, isn't it? That one comes with three minutes and 47 seconds left to go. Here in the first quarter, Reed Haley gets a chance to add another point to it. Eric Smith will do the holding. And we'll give you the long look at it. It's down. It's up. It is a home run. Onto the Lufkin Building porch as they come back up the field. It's the Eagles 14 and the Pioneers nothing. And we'll be back with more right after this. Getting into it. Eric Smith comes up. Booms this one. I don't think there's going to be a return on that one. Considering it just went out of the end zone. And the special team chased the ball all the way down there. I, I really like that. The Eagles special teams, which is probably why they've blocked as many punts as they have this year and uh, returned for kick, uh, kicks for points and intercepted passes. But did you notice they run all the way down into the end zone on they, every kickoff? Exactly. They follow through and they don't allow anything to happen by chance. They want to make things happen. All right, again, two wideouts to, to the left, two to the right, and Otis now under center, hands it to Hartsfield, the running back, and he gets about five yards on the play. Not much there once again as number 97, that's Edward Thomas for the Eagles there to make the stop. Second and five, very quickly up to the line of scrimmage, same formation, same play. This time... Getting nowhere was Hartsfield. Coming up off the bottom of the pile, Scott Davis, number 55 for Georgia Southern. 
We got two yards on the plate. Second down, third down now in seven. And uh, now they go back to the shotgun and the no huddle. They really do look like the Detroit Lions out there with the white jerseys and the silver gray pants. Eagles spread the defense. Snap. Otis goes back. Looks, 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 looks some more. Gets hit and is dropped. He might have got the first down, though. Brian Sellers hit him, but Otis looks like he might have picked up the initial first down. And if he did, that's Glenn just a great effort on his part. He knew where that first down marker was, and yes, the referee signals first down. Three yards on the play. First and ten, the first one for the Pioneers. Well, at six foot five, all he had to do was fall forward, and he got it. Same formation, lone setback, two wide outs left, two wide outs right. Play signaled in from the bench, and Otis hands it to Hartsfield again. He tries to get outside. He gets hit and mashed up pretty good on the far side. By Eric Thickman, one of the guys there, number 27. And the other one is a uh, name we've called many times this year, Francis Williams, number two. Came up from his cornerback slot to help out. Gets three yards on the play. Uh, about three yards, make a third down, second down and seven. Same thing again. They got Bellamy and George on this side. Now they got a new guy on the other side, Brad Bradley. And big number 88, Walter Wilbin, who usually plays tight end. He's way at the top of the screen. Second down and seven. Hartsfield now switches side, and it's the draw again. Trying to get some yardage, and he might have got three more yards, but that was about it. They've gone to that same play maybe three or four times so far this afternoon. They've been four on that one, though. They've not had a lot of success, but if they can get three or four yards a time out of it, uh, they'll probably keep running it. Well, I'll tell you what, though, that's the only running play that we've seen. Well, no, they did do one from under center. I right, third down and three. Oh, got a man in motion. He reset. Did he set in time? No, nope, he didn't. Brad Bradley, out of Salem, Virginia, took a running start. Unfortunately, this is not Canadian football, so you can't do that. Gee, Dad, come on. <laughs> Dead ball foul, illegal procedure, five yards. Well, it's not me, it's the rule. They made that one up even before I was born. That long ago. I right, still third down, but now instead of third and three, it's third and about eight. And now Waterfield, who had come in, runs back out. And in is Carlos Farrell out of Miami, Florida, number two here at the bottom of your screen. Three wide receivers to the right. Everybody out this time. Huh? Two to the left. This is one of those, you run out there, and I'll throw it to you when you get past the Oldsmobile. Otis goes back, he looks, he fires one way over the head of Chris George, but he had tremendous pressure from the front line, most notably Edward Thomas. So it is a third down play, and after getting a first down, it appears that the Pioneers are going to have to punt it away with 42 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. And the defense, listen to that. Exactly what I was going to say. The defense gets a good hand as they come off the field. Brian Fisher out of Weston, West Virginia. Back in punt formation. He'll be at his 20. Dexter Dawson, lone setback. We're after him. Do not get it, though. And the punt is no bargain as it hits at about our 40 and a bounce and die right at the 39. And we will stay right with it at about uh, 30 seconds left to go in the first half. Yeah, first quarter. Yeah, the first quarter. And Gee the first whiz. seven minutes went by in a hurry. The last few minutes here have taken a little bit of time to run off the clock. They stopped to count the crowd, I think. Shaft and Fraley coming back in. Marlo Worthen will come to the sidelines. Fraley, of course, a senior playing in his final game before the home crowd. A young man out of Baldwin High School. And he was a great athlete while he was there. Snap, handoff. Oh, and loose. It is Steven at the 50. Tripped up. Roderick Russell, rather. And Russell all the way to the 45-yard line of I, the Pioneer. I'll tell you what, Tom Reed reached over as he was being blocked himself and grabbed right around the shoelaces and tripped him up. It looked like there was a lot more yardage ahead 
but he was able to bring him down. Got 16 on that one and an eagle first down. And what a play. Did not even, and I'm sorry about that, did not even recognize Roderick had gone in there. He is now the lone setback. And here's the snap. Here's the pitch. Wortham with the ball. It looked like he wanted the pass. Pulled it in at the 45 and gets knocked down. And now we got a flag trailing the play here from the referee. Dropped it at about the 45-yard line. Wortham only got about three yards on that. And Dan, I think you were right. I believe that was a called play for him to throw the ball, but didn't have a receiver open. So he brought it down and tried running. And the referee says illegal block. That's what that thing is. Spreading the fingers, holding the arms, and pushing out. And uh, believe it or not, it's going to end the first quarter, and that's why they're switching sides. So at the end of the first quarter, with the score, Georgia Southern 14 at Glenville State nothing. We'll be back right after these messages. Wind up the first quarter here. Looking for somebody to throw to. He gets hit from behind, keeps his feet inside the 50 and got popped at about the 47-yard line and went down right there at the 47. So a game, well, they didn't move the stick. That's what it was. All right, a gain of about 13 yards on the play. That's what he, that's what he comes up with. Now that officially that will end the first, end the first quarter. quarter. Okay. Okay. But we're going to stay here since we already ended the first quarter once. Somewhat early, but uh, <laughs> all right. Now when they swap the sticks around, and the officials out there saying, let's say, what? How many? What's the telephone number of that good restaurant that you talked about after the game? Yeah. You want reservations you want that, or what number? You want that with mushrooms or anchovies? <laughs> Yeah, and we see a shot of the Georgia Southern cheerleaders all out here cheering the crowd on. And our scoreboard once again. Look at that. There's the eagle moving in and out. Let's make it happen. Okay. They'll rechange. Uh, they'll change the six. There's some of our crowd on the uh, far side, on the side of the hill. Good crowd on hand. There's the band as we're panning from right to left. Good, good group on hand. And we come back to the field of play. And now the Eagles will take it. Second down and 12 from the Pioneer 47 yard line. Now we're starting the second quarter. Snap, handoff, Russell up the middle, and the 45, the 40, the 35, runs over a man at the 30 and gets down to the 25-yard line. A 22-yard pop for Roderick Russell, the red shirt freshman out of Opelika, Alabama. That was a quick shot just right up the middle. He's getting some blocks on that right side. Stacy Moses and Joey Cushing. And on that one, also, Shafton Fraley got the, the block in on him. But mainly Cushing, and uh, checking on the other side, rather, is Jamie Glover and Isaac Farrell. Farrell out of Northside High School, Warner Robbins. Snap, fake, handoff. Here's the pitch, coming back. Oh, Dawson's caught. Cuts back in at the 30, and he'll get bumped and knocked down. Not a game, two yards on it. A lot of running for a couple of yards. Big number 65, Kevin Jenkins, finally got him. He didn't really tackle him. He just bumped into him and knocked him down. Yeah, that's one of those. I'm going to go this way. No, I'm going to go this way. No, I'm going to go this way. And the way he went was a gain of about a yard, actually. So second down and nine. Fraley comes out. And Warthen goes back in. Dawson comes out for a breath of air. And uh, Tristan Belzer goes in. Second down and make it nine. Alfonso Harris wide right. Oop, we got a whistle. And a timeout. A timeout. All right. Well, timeout on the play. 13.51 left to go here in the first half. 14 to nothing in uh, GSU. And we'll be back right after this. They are running our other camera, in case you're wondering. Second down and nine for the Eagles. Ball just inside the 24-yard line. Russell directly behind Robinson. I think he had motion. There's an inside pitch to Warthman. At the 20, the 15, ran into his own man and gets it down to about the 10-yard line. Marlowe was in such a hurry, he ran right into the back of Isaac Farrell. 
Mark it at the 11, a 13-yard pickup. A pass, believe it or not, that's what you classify that as, and that shovel pass. Who was doing that all last weekend on TV? Evidently, the coaching staff here must have been watching that one, and it went off great. Reggie Garland was in there on that play. I want to give him credit. He is our first real tight end freshman out of Thomasville High School. Well, the beauty of that shuffle pass is that it does count as a forward pass, so if it's incomplete, it's incomplete. It's right. First and 10, handoff, Russell. Oh, he got tripped up at the line of scrimmage. I think Jenkins, or it might have been Craig Carpenter, number 92, who got a foot on, uh, on a hand on Robert Russell's foot. And nothing but clear sailing in front of him as Franklin Stevens was out out in front doing a good job on, in blocking for him. They mark it down at about the seven, so give him uh, about a two-yard pickup on that. About a four-yard pickup, I'm sorry. Second down and six. Snap. Russell. No. Robinson. Worthen trying to get outside. He's got a hustle. He dives. They said he's in. Marlow Worthen from seven yards out. No flags on the play. And the Eagles bounce out to a 20 to nothing lead. 12 minutes and 39 seconds left to go here in the first half. And the Eagles will try to put the 21st point on the foot of Reed Haley. Eric Smith will hold it. Give us a look. Snap. Placement. Kick. It is somewhere around the edge of Bullock County. It's good. As they come back up the field, it's the Eagles 21 and Glenville State nothing. And back with more football right after this. Okay, go ahead. All right. Eric Smith now kicking into the wind. We'll see if this makes any difference. Everything's flying around up here again. Eric's kick high, end over end. It's going to come down to Waterfield at about the 12. And he got up to the 19-yard line. I'm not sure exactly what happened there, but when they collided with one another, all of a sudden there were nothing but blue shirts around Waterfield. First and 10 for the... Glenville State Pioneers, the ball on their own 19-yard line is where they put it down, a seven-yard return. Brad Bradley sprints into the formation. Otis under center, takes it, hands it off, and getting out to about the 20-yard line. I see if that was Juan Hartsfield. I just saw an amazing thing. I don't know if you all noticed that in your picture, but there were 10 blue shirts. They're all in there ready for that run right now when they are handing it off. They just collapsed right around that interior box that you always hear the coaches talking about there, right around that line. A gain of about two yards on the play. Now they spread it out a little bit. Snap, Otis looks, fires one out there, hits his man, and knocked down at about the 27, 28-yard line, Derek Bellamy, senior out of Washington, D.C., and Francis Williams got a hold of him, but they got it out to the 27, a gain of six. Third down, and about two yards to go. Saw a little bit of that zip on the quarterback's arm that we had heard about coming in to frozen, today's game. Frozen rope type on that one. They're signaling the play in again, and Bradley comes in at the last minute. Waterfield just kind of nonchalantly walked off the field. Now they got trips left, deuce right. Everybody go out and I'll throw the ball. Otis winds up, fires one. Incomplete, in and out of the hands of the receiver at the 42-yard line. Had too much mustard on that one and it went down incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Anthony Mosby out of Natchez, Mississippi, the intended receiver. He could have had that. At that time, it was a very well-thrown ball right on the letters, but Boy, it was a hummer again, as you had mentioned, so he was not able to hold on to it. Spencer in the punt again. Dexter Dawson back at about R35. Let's see if we load the gun and go up, go in there and after him. See Marlow Worthen on the corner. And our, our block man on the inside lane. There's the snap. Nope, he will say, let's see if we can return it. High. 
spiral. Dawson at the 40 to 45 to 50. He runs into everybody as he gets into Glenville State territory. It'll be first and 10 Eagles at the Glenville State 47. And we'll be back with more right after this. Clayton. Eagles out in front, 21 to nothing. Snap. Now Tyrone Stevens is in there, and he gets two or three yards. He was not scheduled to play, folks. Tyrone coming off of a banged up knee, but again, he is a senior out of Wayne County High School, Jessup, Georgia. Tony Gibson, number 15, reached up and grabbed him as he crossed the line of scrimmage and brought him down for the Pioneers. He got two, second and eight, Belzer checks in, and he will go wide left with Alfonso Harris slot left. Ball right at the 45-yard line of Glenville State. Robinson takes the snap, fakes it, pitches it. Here comes Chris Wright at the 45 to 40, runs into a bunch of white shirts. Tom Reed most noticeably. About the time he crossed the 40, got to the 39. Hey, what Tom Reed is a name who we've called a lot so far in this half. He's been in on a lot of plays. Give him about uh, seven on that. It's gonna be third, a little bit more than one. Gotta go just inside the 38 but not quite to the 37, but it's third down, call it a yard, yard and a half. Dawson checks back in and Dexter will come down right. Snap, Robinson fakes it, goes back, he wants a pass, he's got pressure, he's gonna get hit and drilled at about the 48 yard line, our 48 yard line. 10, 11 yard loss on the play and it'll bring up a, our first fourth down situation. I'm not sure who that one was going to be intended for, to tell you the truth. Well, the thing about it, the offensive line was not able to keep the defense in front four out that time. But one thing that they were able to do was get into that backfield. We did see that the quarterback, Robinson, boy, he's making some good decisions. Don't throw the ball away. Chance the interception. Go ahead and just eat it. Put it down. We'll punt it and turn it back to the defense. Eric Smith on the punt. Nice, easy one. He could have run that one. Good punt. Chris George, who came down with it at about the 19-yard line. And it was uh, Richardson, Jonathan Richardson, Glenn Academy, who was there and had the tough to get out of Chris George's way so he wouldn't interfere with him. First and 10 for the Pioneers at their own 19-yard line. I didn't see him call a fair catch for that. Did he call for a fair catch? Evidently so, because Jonathan got out of his way real quick. 9.26 left to go, first half. 21 zip, Eagles out in front of the Pioneers. Two wide receivers left, two wide receivers right. This is getting to be the same old story, isn't it? Otis takes the snap, hands it, gee, another surprise. They give it to the running back, and Hartsfield got back to the line of scrimmage, might have got a yard, and that was about it. Danny Britt made the initial hit in the backfield, but then after he got away just a moment, uh, number 14, Rob Stockton there to make the stop. Ryan Sellers helping out. It looks like he took a whack in the wing, and Lee Brooks comes in to replace him. So it is Michael Morris and Edward Thomas at the defensive end. Lee Brooks in the middle. Three linebackers and Derek Austin in there at a linebacking position. Nickel package in. Second down. No gain on that last one. Second and ten. Here's the snap. Otis goes back. He looks. He looks. He fires one across. He's got Chris George. At about the 28, 29 yard line, his knee went down about the time he caught it. Give him to him the 28. Rob Stock right there quickly to bring him down, though. Give him nine on the play, and it's going to be third down and one. That was a good play. It would have been a little bit better if we'd have got to him, but this guy's 6'5, 235 pounds. He will not exactly blow over if you woof on him. You got to hit him. Otis gets the call. Takes a look over and he says, yeah, this looks like the defense we want. Wants to throw a quick one. He does. Out the door. Incomplete. In and out of his hands. Francis Williams, along with Eric Thigpen on the coverage, but that was one that should have been caught. Danny Britt also over there. Number 11 for Georgia Southern. They were all celebrating the fact that it was an incomplete pass. That brings up fourth down, and Glenville State chooses very wisely to kick the ball away. Brian Fisher comes in for about his fifth punt already here in the first half. 
time he's hunting with the wind. I'd give him some room. I'd also try to get in there and get it. Here's the snap. Nope, we're going to put the return on again. Nice punt this time. High spiral comes down. It's good bounce. And it's going to go all the way inside our 15-yard line down to about the 12-yard line. Good gracious. Figure that up quick. 20, 30, 40, 58, 59 yards on the punt. That'll help the average. Always does. A little bit of air behind it will make you look real good. Of course, some 50 or 60 years ago, Sammy Ball had a uh, punting average of about 49 yards per punt for the for the season. He either had a pretty good leg or a lot of wind behind him. It's been years since we've seen that, although Auburn's punter is doing a fine job this oh, year. Oh, yeah. First and 10 Eagles, our 12-yard line. we got 7.45 left to go. Robinson takes the snap, ducks inside. Gets out for the 15, close to the 20-yard line before he's finally brought down there. A gain of about eight yards on the play. Got some defensive help from Tony Gibson, the strong safety, to help bring him down. But eight yards, and it's going to be second down and two. Belts are in. Good gracious, we got wholesale changes in there now. Maurice Bain comes in. Hey, the option offense is just such an explosive offense, and you've got to really watch the quarterback. You get a good one like Georgia Southern has in Kenny Robinson, and never know where the ball is going to wind up. That, that time, was on the ground. That time it's on the on the mat. Well, we I did notice that uh, on this, the last go around, Robinson was over here taking some snaps from Franklin Stevens. I'm not sure if he hurt his hand or what. At that time, the ball bounced away from him. Loss of two on the play. Third down now, and about three yards to go for a first down. 6.44, clock is moving. We're in the second quarter. 21 to nothing. Eagles out in front. On third and three. It's a long three on top of it. Snap. Robinson keeps it. Gets away from one. Is not going to get away from the other guy. Got a yard back of it, and that was it. Brian Johnson on the tackle. That's his shadow. Going to bring up fourth down for a punt for Georgia Southern for, what, only the second time in today's game? That's it. And back-to-back, -back, unfortunately, we've been three and out now, two in a row, after scoring on the first three uh, possessions. Glenville State, as you said, they're a tough football team. Eric Smith back out to punt into the win. Chris George back at about his 47, 46-yard line. Smith. Booms one out of there and gets it away from him. Hits at the 50, and don't you know it, it goes dead. It takes a bad bounce back. And is finally downed by Danny Britt at about our 48-yard line. By far the best field position that the Pioneers have enjoyed so far today. Well, did you notice that? Their they're one hits and rolls. Ours hits and bounces back. Brian Pearl's up here with us. How you doing? A, a graduate of Georgia Southern and a host of, uh, what do you call that show again? My Turn Now. I knew that. Good to have you with us. First and ten, Scott Otis. Is that guy big or what? Look at him standing up against Hartsfield. And Hartsfield's six foot tall and makes him look like a midget. Snap. End the round. Fake. Otis wants to throw one. He gets it out to Hartsfield. Derek Austin gets him at the 45. Again, a three. That was just a little sling of a pass, a little, almost like an underhand throw. That was a pretty good play. I didn't realize that. We watched a pretty good play. They faked the end around to Chris George, and then just a little flip to Juan Hartsfield. He picked up three yards, second down, and seven. Five minutes and 22 seconds left to go, first half. 21 to nothing. The Georgia Southern Eagles out in front. Modified formation, two left and two right. There's the snap, draw, and Hartsfield will get five, six, and looks like he's got close to a first down. That time that play is a little more successful. They've run it, that's about the fourth or fifth time so far. Paul Carroll on the tackle that time is, they were able to get into the, past the original line of scrimmage and get four or five yards on the play. Well, we got to give him six because he's, with, he's within a foot of a first down. Brian Sellers was in there, got a piece of him, and uh, he bounced off of him and made the, the six yards. Otis up under center now. Takes the snap, lays down, and at 6'5", he's got the first down. No problem. Not at all. First and ten for the Pioneers. 
And there's still four minutes and 30 seconds left in the half, so they have plenty of time to go down and put some points on the board. Is that their first or second or second? Okay, that's right. They got one before that. So it's the second first down. Yeah, you're right. With uh, four and a quarter left on the board and the way this guy throws. All right, deuce left, deuce right with a wing to the left is Hartsfield. Here's the snap. Otis rolls to the left. He looks, he looks, he wants to throw. He gets one across the middle, incomplete, in and out of the hands of Chris George. This is unusual. This guy, that number 25 that you see, is the leading catcher, pass catcher, in all of college football. I mean, forever and ever. He's the one who broke Gary Rice's record. He's had three or four of them go right through his hands today. Well, it must be it's just warm. Well, everybody can have a bad game. Second guy, it's true, too. Waterfield back in. He'll come out wide to the left. Comes out here along with Doug Jackson, who's in the ball game. Let's so hope he doesn't get warmed up for the second half. Really? Three out left, two out right. Scott Otis by himself. He goes back. Quick pass out to Waterfield. Waterfield this time takes it and runs and gets hit. Paul Carroll, Scott Davis, Derek Austin made the initial hit. And then Paul Carroll came up and got him. Wrapped him up. Both big arms are out to pull him down. Put the ball down at the 33-yard line, so it's a gain of about four. Third down and six. I love to watch the uh, Glenville State team as they get the signal come in. Everybody just stands and looks at the sidelines, watches the assistant coach, wigwag it in, and I guess you try to figure out where you're supposed to go next. Third down and six. Snap. Otis goes back. Looks, looks, looks. Wants to get out of the grasp of one man, out of the grasp of two, heading for the sidelines and out of bounds at about the 21-yard line. A gain of 12 yards on the play and a first down for Scott Otis and the Glenville State Pioneers. Proving to be very elusive that time as he had a chance to be tackled by three or four of the Georgia Southern defenders. He was able to run by all of them before he ran out of bounds. Well, as we said, with his size and his weight, this guy can move it. And he did it for and a first down. Pioneers in good shape. Three minutes and 14 seconds. All three of their timeouts still left. 21 to nothing in favor of the Eagles, but the Pioneers are definitely threatening. Gee, it's a lot warmer today than it was last night, wasn't it? Here's a snap. Inside handoff again. Hartsfield with the ball. Danny Britt on the tackle at about the 15-yard line. Also Scott Davis. But again on the play of about six yards. Second down and four. And the running game coming alive a little bit for the Pioneers now on this drive as they have been able to run and pick up three, four, and five yards sometime at a time. We're going to do our trivia questions in the second half. And remember, first two correct callers will get a couple of tickets to Zoo Atlanta. And it's a nice time of year to go up to Zoo Atlanta, too. Good Saturday afternoon, nice crisp, and a lot of neat things to see up there, too. Snap. Otis looks, 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 fires one. He's got his man. A one-handed catch by Juan Hartfield at the nine-yard line, and he's got enough for the first down, a pickup of six. That's a beautiful catch. He just reached out and grabbed it like he was playing center field in baseball trying to get one over the fence. He just reached out, got it with his fingertips, and pulled it in. And unlike the... Uh, the frozen rope that he had been throwing before, Otis just kind of feathered that one in there, and it was enough for a first down. D.T. Tanner comes back into the ball game, number 47, the freshman out of McNair High School. First and goal to go. Otis looks it over, takes the snap. He wants to run it right up the middle. Ah, I thought I saw that one coming. And the big guy gets inside the five-yard line. Finally hit on the play, making first contact back there. And we've got a pioneer who's down. And one of their linemen, one of the one of the big guys. Looks like number 78 for them, and that is Sean Robinson. You're right, he is one of their offensive linemen. Six foot two, 300 pounds. I would say that he is one of the big guys. And he's having a right knee problem. Well, I'll tell you what, we do need a uh, timeout here to go along with it. While there is a timeout on the field, 
with two minutes and 11 seconds left to go here in the first half and the Eagles out in front 21 to nothing we'll be back with you right after this of course we need three or four of them but second and goal from the three man in motion is George here's the snap Otis looking fires it into the end zone on his knees touchdown a frozen rope that time got him a couple of points on the reception number 83 Doug Jackson nice pass well we mentioned that Glenville State came into the game with an eight and one record so far on the year they're not going to roll over they play in a lower classification lower division than Georgia Southern does but as we mentioned earlier West Georgia played in a lower classification too and they came in here and handed it to us earlier in the year we don't want to talk about that Bobby Buffington on the point after it's up it is good as they come back up the field it is now the Eagles 21 and the Pioneers 7 back with you right after this okay now you play that number and it's a low bouncer they were not going to take any chances right at the 15 to the 20 to 25 gets away from one and gets off of the 30 yard line before he is hit and knocked down by Jason Fisher number 82 about 15 yards first and 10 Eagles at our own 30 yard line hope you have got a good shot and shown you the scoreboard a couple of times but that is really an impressive sight of course this is as they announce it the prettiest little stadium in the state of Georgia and we're really going to have a colorful halftime because today in addition to the appearance day it's band day yeah First and 10 day, Robinson, he's got Worth and wide open down the middle. He's got him at the 50, hit the 45, hit from behind at the 40, and he's knocked down at about the 38-yard line. Marlo Worthen and Kenny Robinson getting together, let's see, 1929, about 20, 32 yards on that pass play. He was finally brought down by number four, Brian Johnson, but it's a good thing Brian was there because that was a perfectly thrown pass. Looked like it had touchdown on it for a while. Had him wide open and good yardage on the play. Chad Holmes back in there at fullback. He does not get the call. Kenny Robinson pitches it out the right. At the 35 to 30. Jukes his man at the 25 and knocked down by Tom Reed at about the 25-yard line. 12 yards for Chris Wright and another Eagle first down. Not a bad effort. 45 yards in a matter of two plays. Well, we've got 118 left with the Eagles with only one timeout left see what they can do in these closing seconds. A matter of getting the ball down the field, or at least getting it into Reed Haley's range. Going to have to bang it, though. It's against the wind. Snap. Keeper. Robinson hit behind the line of scrimmage and dropped by number 55, Chuck Python, a senior out of Steubenville, Ohio. I remember that place. 49 seconds now and the clock is running. Chris Wright comes out of the ball game. And it was Shafton Fraley who went in in his place. Second now, loss on the play of five. Robinson pitches it back. Fraley, who can throw it, lost it down. Taken by far by Dawson. Knocked out of bounds at about the 23-yard line. The only question on that one was whether it was going to be inbounds when he caught it or not. And they do rule that he was inbounds. A pick up on the play. Let's see where they finally put the thing down. Down at the 21-yard line. All right, so he got a couple of yards on that one, and it's going to be third down. And right at six yards, seven yards to go. Robinson in the middle. It's home inside the 10 to the 5-yard line. Chad Holmes off the left side. A 16-yard run down to the five-yard line, first and goal to go. And Holmes comes up a little bit gimpy. Roderick Russell was going in. He's not going to be able to get in in time, though. First and goal to go, 23 seconds left to go in the first quarter, first half. Now I want to reverse it. And very wisely, Kenny Robinson just downs the ball so we can get Roderick Russell in. And Chad Holmes out. Chad came up limping and gimping on that one. And that also preserves the timeout that we do have left so that if we do get a chance and can't punch it in, that we can go for the field goal. 19 seconds left to go in the first half. 
21 to 7. Eagles out in front. And threatening. Definitely need to add one. Robinson snap. Russell takes it. Got turned upside down as he got inside the five to the four. And now we'll take that final timeout. We'll keep it right here, however. About a yard on the play for Roderick Russell. Our fullbacks have run very well. There's the scoreboard. And the Scruton Eagle up at the top, showing you 14 seconds left to go. And, of course, the matrix board says timeout. But, of course. Well, I don't know, Coach Hester, what do you think? Well, we're ahead 21-7. to 7. I'm kind of one of those I hate to gamble, so I believe I'd go ahead and come in and let's go for that field goal, put those three points, those three what we would hope would be sure points on the board. Yeah, I'd go along with you. It's but it's just third down right now. Yeah, that's that's we one could, of the things. We could try something and then quickly try to get someone in there to kick the field goal, but you don't know whether you have enough time to do it with only 14 seconds up there. Well, in something like this, I'd almost say, let's go for the pass. Hell yeah. Put in uh, Reggie Garland, the, the big tight end. 6'3", 222, he's big enough. Coach Towers really has been high on him this year. Oh, yes. Our meeting at Media Day as the season was a month or so away from beginning. And can you was believe very, it? Very happy with having a real pure tight end with Georgia Southern. Harris out wide right, Dawson in the slot to the right, and now here's Chris Wright coming right. Robinson looking, looking, looking. He says he might get it. He can't. He gets knocked down at about the three-yard line, and that is going to cost us because there's no way. It was not the first down. It's fourth down, and we got a flag. Two flags. Laundry all over the place. What happened here? The kicking team is going out with one second left to go. Dead ball foul, personal foul. Oh, well, that's one way to stop the clock. You get a personal foul called against you. Now, wait a minute, because if if it's accepted, it's 15 yards back. And the clock stops with one second to go. If they decline it, it's first down. No, that was third down. This would be fourth down. They've either got to take the penalty or give up a field goal, one or the other. Yeah, that's the that's the alternative. It's a 15-yard penalty. Moves the ball all the way back out to the 16-yard line, 17, 18-yard line. Eric Smith will put it down at the 25. As soon as he marks it ready for play, you got to snap the ball. There it is. Snap the ball. Here's the kick. It is up. It is long enough. It is floating. It is good. Well, there's the way to end the first half. And the coaches for Glenville State are having a fit. They said the time should have elapsed. It did not. Reed Haley, a 35-yard field goal with triple zeros on the board to make it 24-7 to at halftime. Don't ask me. I just got here. That is the head coach for Glenville State, and he is not too happy, sports fans. He just threw a flag on himself. Anyway, the halftime score, the Eagles from Georgia Southern 24, the Pioneers of Glenville State 7, and we'll be back with halftime right after this. From getting the Coke at intermission. I'll tell you, got our, got our camera so shook up, we, we're... <laughs> We're getting one of those strafing runs again. Eagles out in front, 31 to 7. A minute and 17 seconds was all it took. Let's see, we got seven yards on the first carry, 21 on the next one, and 52 on the third one, and it was three plays. I'm sorry, Freddie, you were white. Three plays, not four. Goodness gracious, what a way to go. Eric Smith will be kicking off. And he's kicking into the wind, uh, this one. Booms it anyway. Wow. Fades off to the right. Comes down at about the four to Chris George. To the 10, to 15, to 20. Trying to get outside. He does. And Eric Smith pops him out of bounds. Somewhere around the 34-yard line is where they're going to mark it down. A 30-yard return. And it'll be first and 10. As Glenville State finally gets a chance. Chris George is first in the nation 
as far as receiving goes. Receiving yardage, he's second in the nation, third in punt returns, fourth in all-purpose yardage, and 20th in kickoff returns. Not bad. This guy can go some. Scott Otis still in there at quarterback. Looks it over, call, makes the call, and now Stockton drops off. And here's the snap, and it is a fake, and he wants to roll to the right. He finds a man out here, complete, and hit. Chris George and Marco Bradham put him down about the time he caught the ball. Still got nine, maybe ten yards. Let's see what they, where they give it to him. It's going to be real close to a first down. Chris George, not a particularly big guy, as a matter of fact. He's a six-footer, 180 pounds. And the referee now says, let's take a look at this. And Jim Jackson will take the time on himself and call the chains in from all the way across the field. Other, and here they four. come. And we will watch it with you as they stretch it out. Can't get much better of a shot than that. And they do have it. So give him 10 yards on the reception. And a first and 10 for the Pioneers. Scott Otis out of Southington, Connecticut. Chris George from Clarksburg, West Virginia. And I'm sure that Monday when I see Sam Satterfield over at Strawther Harris, he'll be able to tell me exactly where all these places are. First and 10 at the 44-yard line for the Pioneers. Snap. Otis, delayed handoff, trying the middle, Juan Hartsfield, and I think he might have gotten a yard, maybe two on the play. The defensive line and the offensive line just standing it up and slugging it out there at the line of scrimmage. And they moved the sticks uh, about two, make it second down and eight. Well, the defensive line is a few pounds lighter than the offensive line, but they're not giving away anything. Snap, Otis goes, looks, getting chased, fires one way downfield, complete to Chris George at about the 31-yard line. It's complete to, Scott, uh, to Chris George. And about 19 and uh, right at 28 yards on that play. First and 10 for Glenville State at our 31-yard line. Drill that thing right in there. You couldn't have asked for anything better. Play being signaled in from the sidelines, and it'll leave him about 10 seconds to get the play off. I think I called it the shot clock. I meant the play clock back in the first quarter. Takes the snap, rolls, looks, 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 fires one out. It is complete. On the far sideline, the number five, Brad Bradley, the junior out of Salem, Virginia. He fell out of bounds at the 25, a gain of six. It's going to be second down and four. Again, the no huddle. And the coaches are coaches signaling in the plays, and I imagine, I take it for granted, that that is the head coach, Rich Rodriguez. Looks like him. Second down and four. Snap. Otis looks, throws one out quick to Chris George. He's got good blocking on this side. He gets inside the 20 and up for the first down. Rob Stockton puts him down along with Paul Carroll, but not before he picks up about six, seven yards. Give him six. And another first down for the Pioneers now at the Eagle 18-yard line. That was a well-conceived play, and there was good blocking, and that enabled him to get enough for the first down. Trips to the right, deuce to the left. He's got three wide receivers to the right, two wide receivers to the left, including their big tight end. Snap. Looking, looking, looking. Now he wants to run. He steps up. He fires one out. Hartsfield can't handle it. Francis Williams got there about a step behind the ball. It went in and out of Hartsfield's hands, and uh, Francis made sure that he did not get a chance to get a handle on it. Second down and 10. 
Second and ten as they'll come up now. And once again, we're going to watch too. I'm going to start watching with the coach's wig wagon in there. He might be making nasty signals. <laughs> Second down and ten. Three to the right, two to the left again. Five-man front line, and it is a huge one. And Otis on a quarterback draw is inside the 15 down to the 10, close to a first down. Good call because everybody's going back in pass coverage, and the quarterback as the lone running back. And in case you missed it, we'll hit you with it one more time at 6'3", 235 pounds. He got eight yards on the play. It's going to be third down at about two for the Pioneers at the 10-yard line. We have got 10 minutes and 40 seconds left to go in the third quarter, 31 to seven in favor of the Eagles, but Glenville State is uh, driving again. Snap, Otis, Paul Carroll chasing him, hitting, a fumble, it's picked off in midair by Michael Morris and it's our ball. Paul Carroll really upset the apple cart on that one as he roared in and stripped the ball out of Scott Otis's hands. Michael Morris picked it out of the air and it's first and 10 Eagles. That's one way to end up. Another threat. great play by Paul Carroll who's just had himself a very fine senior season. As a matter of fact, leading the Eagles in tackles this year, came into the game with a total of 109, one and a half sacks. I guess you can do that. He, that's the third time he's caused a fumble. Eagles ball, first and 10. Here's the snap, handoff, check it, pitch out, shaft and Fraley hit in the corner, gets away from one, won't get away from the other, and, and got drilled at the same he'll time. He'll be lucky if he got back to the line of scrimmage that time. That was a pretty play by Paul Carroll, just grabbed, stripped the ball away from the quarterback. Well, that's one way to stop him from throwing the thing. You just get in there and get him. Uh, got back to the line of scrimmage. Can't give him anything on that one. It's going to be second down and 10. 9.51 left to go, third quarter. 31-7, Eagles out in front. Alfonso Harris comes out wide to the right, way out here. Dawson in the slot to the right. Here's the snap. Robinson rolls to the right, looks, shuffle pass. Ooh, that time Chris Wright really got his bell rung by number 46. Who is that? Brooks Barbary out of Taylor, South Carolina. And he's a big boy in that time. I tell you what, he was right Johnny on the spot. He's 6'1", 210 out of Taylor, South Carolina. Reached up and grabbed him as he went by on that after he caught the little shuffle pass. Give him three yards on it, but it's going to be third and seven. Well, the last time that shovel pass worked pretty good. This time it hurt. Here's the snap. Robinson rolls. He looks. He looks. He's going to run. No, he's going to throw. He's got Dexter Dawson for the first down at about the 40-yard line. As they knock him out at about the 38 or 39. Kenny awfully close that time to crossing the line of scrimmage before he threw the ball. Wait a minute. They rule it incomplete. Well, you want to talk about a late call on that one. They brought it back. It was incomplete. A big turnaround. I'm not sure of exactly what happened on that one because everybody was there uh, chasing him, and he actually ran for yardage, and then they ruled it incomplete. Well, Eric Smith's going to have to punt. Glenville State comes in. Nice high spiral. Chris George says a fair catch. Does a little dance with it, and it'll be first and 10 for Glenville State at their own 48-yard line. 8.44 left to go in the third quarter. We'll be back right after this. What's for dinner? Why not try someplace new and exciting? Make it Nakota's Japanese. After getting, uh, I don't know if they get one, one player, two or three over there. Scott Tomlinson, their center, 6'5", 275. Really anchoring the middle of the line. There's the snap. Otis, a quick pitch out by the side. It is Chris George. He gets some yardage and gets hit and knocked out of bounds. Paul Carroll over there once again on the tackle. And I'll tell you, the quarterback has really got a quick release when he slings that ball. Looks like you're completely sidearm, perhaps even underhand almost. Comes through there and slings that ball out and got the completion. Now he can sure throw it. Four yards on that one, though. Second down and about six. He did not go out of bounds. Shot clock again to get the play in with 10 seconds left. 
Hartsfield is this, the setback there on the right-hand side. Here's the snap. He breaks and goes out. Here's uh, Otis. He's going to run, and he is hit. At about the time he got past the line of scrimmage, Thomas Plant out of Macon County High School, junior, gained to the 46, give him about two, make it third down and four. I know that play was designed to go for a lot more, but Thomas Plant, all 6'1", 262 of them, said, no, didn't think so. Thomas Plant is in there. At the other end right now is Derek Reeves, the freshman out of Butler High School in Augusta. In Augusta. And Lee Brooks is in the center, and now we switch, and Scott Davis comes around. And <laughs> Derek Reeves said he moved, he moved, and he probably did, as a matter of fact. Reeves is very adamant about the fact that it was the right tackle who caused all that. And the referee says, dead ball foul, illegal procedure. He agrees, five yards. So instead of third and four, it's now closer to third and nine. A shade less than nine, but it's still third down. And that five yards will hurt. Three wideouts coming wide to the left. Two at the top to the right on third and nine. Did that change the play any? Scott Otis says no. He's still got to throw it. He does. Good blocking on the side and a good reception for the first down. Anthony Mosby with the catch and run down to about the 40-yard line. A pickup of 10, and he's got the first down. And it looked for a moment like they were going to be able to come up and stop him a couple of three yards short of the first down, but all of a sudden he just surged forward for the first down. All the way out to the 40-yard line. Our 40-yard line. First and 10. Danny Britt just came out. D.T. Tanner went back in. First and 10 for Glenville State. Otis goes back. He looks, he looks, he looks. A long time. Puts it down there. He's got Chris George open in the end zone for the touchdown. What a catch. What a catch. Chris George from 40 yards out. And he threw that oh, ball and a very flag well, on the play. we do have a flag on the play. It'll be called back Skip with a that. holding call. Well, you were wondering, doesn't that get you mad? <laughs> I started writing the thing down, and about the time play, Freddie said there was a flag. So it will cost them, instead of six points, it's going to be ten yards. And on top of it, it's behind the line of scrimmage. It's a 10-yard penalty, but a loss of close to 14 yards. Holy crow, this thing goes all the way back. It is. It's all the way back to their 46. So it's going to be first down, but now first and 24. Meanwhile, here comes the wind whipping through the box. We've been blowing away here. Well, that was a big turnaround at that point, just as Paul Carroll in the last series, when he stripped the ball away from the quarterback as they looked like they were going for a score, game would be much different. Actually, here's the snap. Otis looking, 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 wants to fire one way downfield. He's got a man open. He's got him again, and it's going to be a touchdown anyway. Mosby on the reception. Well, if you can't do it one time, do it twice, right? 54 yards this time. Using the wind to his advantage, Otis threw it and aired it out. Six minutes, 32 seconds. Makes the score 31 to 13 as they line up to go for the extra point. Well, I guarantee you, if you had wondered if this guy had any kind of an arm because of the first half, maybe he was saving it in the locker, but he sure came out. He's coming out looking good in the second half. Buffington for the extra point. Eagles drop it back. Buffington blocked. Oh, and it went through the hands of one of our defenders, Andra Rogers. And they're still seeing who's going to get the ball down there. And uh, we'll have to wait for a signal because if it's recovered, it's good. Rogers was trying to pick it off and run with it. it would have been an interesting run back for a point after touchdown. We still have no signal. The signal is no good. All right. With six minutes and 32 seconds left to go in the third quarter, the score, it's right there. The Eagles 31, the Pioneers 13. Back with you right after this. Falls in Stadium, I'm Dan Jaskula. Fred Hester here with me, my lovely wife, Margaret. 
who had to do a little erasing and then put it back on again. That's why they call it statistics. Up on the roof, David Wood, along with Daniel Wright, our nephew, and Carrie Hester, Fred's daughter. And Brian Prell back here with us. You didn't go to lead any cheers, though, huh? No, okay. They're doing a pretty good job. Yeah, uh, I've, they, they seem to be doing a fairly decent job. <laughs> Buffington will do the kicking off. Back deep for us, Marlo Worthen and Chris Wright. 31-13. It's still a ball game, folks. Or what did Yogi used to say? It ain't over till it's over. Robbie Buffington up on the ball. Booms it up. High end over end. Marlo Worthen in the end zone. Says he'll bring it out. At the 10, the 15, to 20, the 25, to 30. Hits the seam at the 35 at about the 36-yard line. Flag on the play. See what that's all about. Only thing right there that it could possibly be, I would think, would possibly be either a, a cliff or a face mask. Let's see what we're going to have. Illegal block. Uh, could be, too. You're right. Taking a Pepsi-Cola break in the middle of the play. Isaac Farrell says it is against... Glenville State. Whatever it is, we'll probably add a nice little 10-yarder at least on. About 36 yards on the return by Worthen. Still no signal. Oh, there it is. Okay. And you were right. Yep. Shoving, pushing, and doing other nasty things. So, mark it off. For about 10 yards, tack on 10 more. First and 10 Eagles at our 47-yard line. Oops, the referee just got turned around. Yeah. Did you see that? Yep. Say first down that way, that, that way, says, that way. Okay. The other way, the other way. First and 10 for the Eagles. Roderick Russell in there at fullback now. Here's the snap. And inside, handoff to Worthen at the 50. Cuts out at the 40. Needs a block. He's not going to get it. He gets knocked down at the 41-yard line. Beautiful play. Though the A-back coming back in. That's an old wing-back reverse, inside reverse. And he picked up, let's see, about 13 yards on the play. And Reggie, and Reggie Cash ran him all the way from right around the middle linebacker slot over to the sideline to make the stop. But we do have first down for the Eagles. And Marlowe has to come out to get his helmet cleaned up. Shaft and Fraley in. Snap. Fake. Here's a pitch. Here's Chris Wright. Hits the corner at the 40. The 35 down to about the 30-yard line. Going to be close to another first down. Flag on the play. Oops. Flag on the play. Number 55, Chuck Hyphen. And Hyphen was the guy who made the stop for the Pioneers. But what is the laundry all about? Well, we did a high school game here a week or so ago that we just had flag after flag after flag. I hope that's not what's developing here. Holding against the Eagles, as you saw it. And we'll give back all that yardage that we had a moment ago on the got, penalty. Got 10, but let's see where the, where the penalty took place. Because if it's down here, it may still be first and 10. We don't lose a thing out of this. All right, umpire marks it off. Guess what? Yeah. Takes it back. They're very close to the original line of scrimmage. So it's a 10-yard gain, a 10-yard penalty, and it's first down. And uh, 10 yards to go. Hmm. And There's this, something mathematical about that. And this time the there? referee gives us the right, <laughs> the right way. All okay. Right. <laughs> All right. Still on the same part. Fraley in motion, comes back. Here's Robinson with the ball at the 35, cuts at the 30, looks behind him at the 20 to the 15, down to about the 13, 14-yard line. A 24-yard run, 27-yard run, make it. Great job that time by Kenny Robinson running for daylight. He just sat and saw where the open field was ahead of him and was able to get a real good gain all the way down inside the 20-yard line. Alfonso Harris with a good block out in front of him. Shafton Fraley with a good block out in front of him. Mark it at the 14, first down and 10. Chris Wright comes out, Marla Worthen back in. It's Worthen and Fraley now at the running backs. Snap, fake, handoff, Roderick Russell up the middle into the end zone. 
almost couldn't get it out fast enough. That's how quick it happened. From 14 yards out, Roderick Russell, he makes it look like a hot knife going through cold butter, folks. 5-12 left to go. So a minute and 20 seconds after the 54-yard touchdown pass. On the hole, there is Smith. From from Glenville State, we answer back and put another six on the boards. Reed Haley attempting to add number 38, pops it through there, just like nothing happened. As they come back up the field, it is the Eagles, 38, Glenville State, 13. Back with you in 30 seconds. for a living here at Georgia Southern. One push-up for every point. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I tell you what, they'd have to hold up the game for a day and a half if that was me down there. I had to be hoping for a score not to exceed 10 to 7. <laughs> 3 to nothing. <laughs> Take a field goal and let's go home. Safety is fine. Oh, gracious. Eric Smith will get to try his talented leg out again. He is a senior, incidentally, folks. This is his last home game. They honored all the seniors. Hey, should we try a trivia question? Why not? Write this down. Here's our phone number, 746-6464. If you get the right answer, you get a couple of tickets. Well, right after this, Eric booms this one against the wind. Chris George, one yard deep in the end zone. At the 5, the 10 cuts it up at the 15. They got a flag behind him. It's going to come back anyway. Hit it about the 26-yard line, but there is a flag. Jonathan Richardson is pointing. He says, it was me. They clipped me. All right, if you know the question to this, legendary coach time, as a matter of fact, we want the name, first name, and, oh, we got two flags on here. Now Wait a need, minute. Now we need the answer, not the, not the question. Oh. Right? We're not playing Jeopardy. Okay. No, oh, that's okay, right. Okay, we, right. We want the, the answer. Well, anyway. Okay. I want the first name and the nickname of the legendary coach of the Crimson Tide. It's an easy one, but you got to be one of the first two callers. If you're outside the viewing area, area code 912 746 Let's see. Oh, yes, uh, Joe, yes, yes. Joe Willie Namath. That's him. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, no. No, that wasn't him. No, no. Okay. It's close, though. Close. All right. It was sorted all out, and our referee says offside against the Eagles. Illegal block against the Pioneers, and it gets wiped out, and that's D.T. Tanner down on the ground there. Out of McNair High School in Atlanta. And he's looking like... At the very least, he got the breath knocked out of him pretty well over there. Well, they're getting him up. Well, they're trying to get him up. We will re-kick this thing then. And Tanner is up. A little gimpy. Other seniors on the squad who were honored today, Joe Dupree from up our way, making Southwest, Eric Smith, Charles Bostick would have been a senior. I'm not sure what his status is. Danny Britt's going to be gone, Shafton Fraley, Chris Wade out of Newton County, Chris Wright from Lowndes County, playing in his last home game, Reed Haley, the talented leg, Tyrone Stevens, who, uh, as I said, has been hurt, but he uh, is in the game. Paul Carroll, our buddy from Hardaway. Joey Cushing is a senior. Brian Sellers is a senior. Scott Davis, Franklin Stevens, Charlie Burt. Ooh, it's a long list. Jermaine Howard. Isaac Farrell from Northside High School and Warner Robbins. Michael Morris will be going away. JT Profits, a senior, too. And, of course, JT just came to us as a, uh, a transfer out of Christian High School in Mount Vernon. And we'll see the kickoff one more time. Oh, and it is an onside kick, and it went out of bounds. All right. Well... It was a good try. Eric got a little bit too much of it. In fact, he got most of the tee. That's what he was standing there picking up. So it is against uh, an illegal procedure since it went out of bounds. Now here's an interesting thought because 
You usually take them at the 35. Does that mean they lose eight yards? No, I'm kidding. Went out of bounds at the 43, and that's where it will be Glenville State's ball, first and 10. At that point, and all that messing around took only eight seconds off the clock. Hope nobody has got an early dinner date because we're not going to get there. First and 10 as Scott Otis brings his team back out, now trailing 38 to 13. They're only losing by 24, and now they're losing by 25. Snap. Inside handoff, and again, Hartsfield may get a yard, and that's about it. Brian Sullers, along with Derek Austin, and that's when you can tell that the nickelback is playing a pretty good game because he comes out as a uh, linebacker and crashed in there and made the tackle. Final score, I'm watching them wigwag that signal in. And this is a different setup. Is it possible they only have enough guys out there? Yeah, they do. They're all going right. A fake. Otis goes to the right, fires one out there, complete. And Marco Bradham gets Derek Bellamy as about the time he gets the pass. Out to the 49-yard line, a gain of six. It'll be second down at about four. Clock stopped. 4.09 left to go in the third quarter. How many passes has this guy thrown? 23. Well, that's not bad. He usually, usually he throws a lot more than that. Swapping around. They're signaling it in. Actually, if you watch the coach do this, it looks like he's swatting flies. Three out wide left, two out to the wide to the right. Otis takes it. He wants to fire out a quick one. Incomplete. Ooh, I'd get on that too. Incomplete. An incompleted pass. Could have almost been ruled a uh, a lateral. Chris George unable to hold on to it. Otis was getting pressure on the play and it's going to bring up fourth down. Looked like a good idea that time though because it looked like there was wide open space. He had a, he's had that play work for him, lane. too. Yeah, he had a good lane in front of him. Yeah, he had, they put a couple of blockers out there. They drop him back, and you pick up two blockers, and nobody can get them. So we've got fourth down now. Dexter Dawson back to, to receive. There's a snap. Ooh, they thought he was going to fake it. He gets it up there high. Dawson at the 15. Oh, he dropped the ball, and he covers it very quickly at the 24-yard line. The thing just bounced perfectly. That's what we saw happen last night in the Northside Warner Robins game that, that I was able to attend. Northside had things going their way until a, a, little, a little fumble on a punt return like that. Well, Dexter gets uh, about a 10-yard return credited to him on that one. <laughs> I'm sure that's not quite the way he planned it. The last five on a dive. Right. First and 10 Eagles at our 25-yard line. Snap. Fake. Robinson coming out to the corner. Good block at the 30. 35 cuts back in at the 40. The 45 at the 50. Dukes a man out at the 45 to 40. The 35 to 30 cuts back in and is hit at about the 22-yard line. Holy crow. Boy, now you talk about somebody waiting on his blocks that time. He was just running. He would guide traffic in front of him, able to get all the way down to the 21-yard line. 53 yards on the carry 53 yards and if you saw that on a replay on any point of that run you would think he was maybe getting five or ten yards at the most for it instead, instead it goes five times that amount that was one that you have to sit back and look at again and again just to make sure that that's really what happened Hattie Ford having to go off for Glenville State injured on the play First and 10 Eagles at the Glenville State 21-yard line. What a play. Great block in there by Worthen, too. Snap. Straight up the middle. Tyrone Stevens at the 10 to 5. Did he make it? Touchdown. The injured senior from 21 yards out. Two plays, 75 yards. A fitting tribute for him playing in his last game here at Allen E. Paulson Stadium. The senior scores the touchdown. And, of course, he is playing still a little bit gimpy 
And you can see it at the end of the run, he was really having to stretch to get that one in. Reed Haley will try for his sixth extra point on the day. Oh, I think somebody's offside. In fact, I think there's a lot of folks offside. It's a pretty good play if it works, but that one didn't quite work. I think they can assess that on the kickoff. That's it's a, if it's against Glenville State. Better not count that, that one in the hen house until we see what happens. Dead ball foul. Yeah, it's offside against Glenville State. Well, that was a pretty easy call to make, wasn't it? Yeah, except the umpire is picking the ball up and walking against us. Okay. Now he's going to turn and go the right way. All right. Half the distance to the goal, about a yard and a half on the penalty. That's big Reggie Garland, number 88 there in your picture. Number 60 being Robert Hadley. And Stuart Dixon will do the snapping. Now we'll try that extra point. Down and up. Oops. Another flag. That one was no good, but we got a flag. And let's see what that's all about. Illegal procedure against the Eagles. Well, now the Glenville State can uh, decline it. The field announcer sounded surprised. Did you notice that? Number one, Youngstown State defeated Massachusetts 28 to 9. Well, you cannot do decline it. I'm sorry. It's a dead ball foul. It's got to be assessed. Number six, Troy State. Number 21, Alcorn State. All sides, 21 apiece. At the start of the fourth quarter, number 18. So we'll try this one from the 14-yard, make it a 24-yard effort. There it's down, it's up. This time Haley gets a whole bunch of it, and this time it's good. All right, they'll come back up the field one more time, and the Eagles bounce out in front, 45 to 13. Back with you right after this. Fellow travelers, lights, and journey. Our friend. Number six, Eric Smith. I'm not sure what the message was. Regular season openers. Oh, okay. Basketball. That's right. Oh, yeah. Eastern Kentucky here. Coming to town. Yeah. All right. Here we are talking hoops. That's what it said was men's and women's hoops. And I was trying to figure out what kind of store was advertising men's and women's hoops. It's Jim Stevens, that store. He, of course, is SID for basketball here at the... Uh, Eagles home. And we should take this time to remind you that ACC basketball returns to Channel 64. A lot of action, all starting in January. Eric Smith, oh, a bouncer, ground ball, taken at about the 31 yard line and trying to run outside and not really getting anywhere was number 30, Mitch Cart. Brought down by number 80, Will Roberts, who's out there on the specialty teams. We may see some new faces here in the not too distant. Eric Thigpen is in there, so we're gonna go nickel package right off the bat. First and 10, mark it at the 33 yard line as Glenville State has a little under three minutes left to go here in the third quarter. And I see a new Glenville State quarterback warming up on the sidelines. However, Scott Otis is still in there. We have got uh, one new fella in there. We'll pick him up in a second. Here's a snap. Otis wants to run with it. He's going to try to get outside and gets rather, rather rudely treated at about the 35-yard line. That's Danny, That's Danny Britt. Britt again, number 11. He's now, had a good game today. You want a mismatch. Danny Britt's 5'10", 195, going up 6'5", 235. Well, Otis picks up about uh, three yards on the play. They get three, second down and seven. In for Georgia Southern, incidentally, was Anthony Battle, the sophomore out of Worth County High School. Second and seven, Otis brings him up. Oh, look at this. The lineup on the right side of your screen is three guys all in a row. Here's a snap, and here's that pitch, and Chris George trying to get outside. Now he throws a left-handed pass complete. And going down the left side was number nine, is Kevin Waterfield. Well, that's one I've not seen before. No. How about you, Brother Dan? I guarantee you that was a good play. Line everybody in a row and then let them go for it. 
pick up on the play. Let's see where they mark it out the 47, a 12 yard gain and a first down and make the completion from number 25 to number nine. This guy's talented. He's also a senior out of Clarksburg, West Virginia. I don't know that he'd be able to play quarterback, but he looks like a good wide receiver. Otis, inside handoff. Oh, man. I tell you what, that play was spoiled by Thomas Plant. All 262 pounds of him. Whoop, we got a flag on the play. I don't know what that's all about, but it's going to be called on the Eagles. No gain, well, no gain, about a loss of a yard. And the flag came flying out late. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct. Ooh. And I would imagine they've ran that play probably six or eight times today. And someone probably got up off the defensive side of the ball and basically said in nice terms, try that one again, sucker, or whatever they wanted to do. And <laughs> Well, but whatever. Not, but not quite in that tone of voice it's and probably got the call for that. 15 yards on the play, first and 10. Paul Carroll being the defensive captain is out there questioning saying oh come on now ref first down 10 he really wanted to know whether or not they wanted anchovies on that pizza first and 10 for the pioneers now at the ball just inside our 40 yard line send a couple of guys out wide right couple more out wide left with a lone setback clock moving with a minute and 52 seconds left to go here in the third quarter 45 to 13 eagles out in front snap fake. Otis wants to throw one. He guides it down to Chris George, who does a spin move, and Rob Stockton held him up and then got help at about the 30-yard line by Paul Carroll. But it looks like it may be enough. Nope, they put it down on the other side of the 30. It's not going to be enough for a first down. Give him 9.9 .9 yards on it and call it second down and about that long. Not even. Scott Davis back into the ball game. Replacing Anthony Battles, snap a handoff, and Waterfield carries for the first time. On the carry. And gets kind of scrunched, but I think he got enough for the first down. He ran into about everybody in the middle of the line. Referee says, timeout, let's see where it's at. First down. Mark it at the 29, so give him a yard on the play, and he got enough. First and 10. Thomas Plant comes out. Lee Brooks comes out. Paul Carroll coming out. Chad Nybert, so far, is the only guy who went in. No, we got 11 guys out there. Who else came in? Nybert's going to be the... Well, we're playing a real strange one there. Now everybody drops off. Otis wants a pass, fires one way downfield, knocked down. Francis Williams looked like he had a chance at it. Eric Thigpen tipped it and it went over. Otis that time throwing into triple coverage. Wasn't really much of a chance to complete that. Our own Georgia Southern defenders a better chance than the receiver. Actually kind of an odd formation on defense when we came out. We are playing a 6-1-4. Looked like an old New York Giants umbrella defense. Check out the Lady Eagles as they prepare for the Southern Conference Tournament. Scott Davis is up there playing a defensive end position. Michael Morris is on the other side. Here's the snap. Otis on second down and 10. Looks, 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 fires one across. Incomplete intended for Derek Bellamy, who was cutting in at about the 15-yard line. Stockton and Bradham there on the coverage. It's going to be third down. Third down, 10. Pioneers. Well, the Pioneers have played a pretty good ball game. Even uh, being on the short end of a 45-13 score, they have looked very good in some spots. Well, we do know there was a couple of cases where it looked like they were going for scores that uh, one time the ball got stripped away from the quarterback, another time an interception. Would have made and the score a lot closer. Third and 10, a lot of heat coming up. Oh, he lost it again, and Michael Morris has got the ball. It was number 97, Edward Thomas, who tipped it, and Michael Morris had it come right into his hand. I don't know if you scored that as an interception because he wasn't ready to throw it. I think it's just a plain fumble. A loss of five on the play, and the Eagles take over first and 10. Looked like an identical play from earlier in the game when Paul Carroll went back and stripped the quarterback of the ball as he was going back to try to pass. Unbelievable. 
Now the shadows are growing long. Yeah, and there's going in favor of the Eagles. At and this there's point. still another 15 minutes to go. 45-13, <laughs> our ball first and 10. Kenny Robinson takes it, hands it off, and it's straight up the middle. And Tyrone Stevens still banging away. Finally gets hit at about the 39-yard line. Goodness, there were 30-some seconds left, and I thought he was going to take it all off the clock just on that one carry. Stevens gets four, call it second down and six. Bells are back into the ball game. Mississippi State seven, the University of Alabama three. Belzer came in and Alfonso Harris came out. Dawson now wide to the right. Our same formation, it still looks good, it still scores points. Robinson rolls, pitches, here's Chris Wright, needs a block, got it. At the 40, gets it on at the 45, cuts back in at the 50, and is finally rolled out of bounds at about the 46-yard line, and there's a flag on the play. A couple of them, as a matter of fact. That time, Chris Wright was looking for it. I think he thought he got a face mask pulled on him. Let's see what the ref says. Well, we'll take 15 yards on the gain. Two great blocks there for Wright, though, coming out of the backfield. He's done a great job today, not just when he got the, his hands on the ball, but also, oh, we got a personal foul call against, against late, Pioneers. Late hit, out of bounds. But speaking of Chris Wright, he's done a good job, not just when he had his hands on the ball, but in blocking today, done just a great job. Almost any time when you see a ball come out to the side and you know he's got a blocking assignment, he's right there to make it. Hasn't missed very many of them today. He'll grade out very high when it comes time to watch those films. Oh, yes. 15 yards, first and 10 Eagles at the Glenville State 31. I think I know who the Glenville State player was that got called for that one, but we will not call his name. One second left on the clock. In other words, snap it in the third quarter goes into the history books. Robinson takes it, fades it. Going to run it himself at the 25. Cuts in at the 20. Down at about the 14-yard line. A 17-yard pickup for Kenny Robinson. And that is the end of the third quarter. With the score, the Georgia Southern Eagles 45. The Glenville State Pioneers 13 will be back with the fourth and final quarter right after these messages. Must be the jazz ensemble, huh? That must be. And they're having a good time doing it too. First and ten Eagles as we take you back to the field. Woo! Little fast ride there. Here's the snap. Robinson rolls. He pitches Warthen or Champion Fraley holds it off. An incomplete intended for Dexter Dawson. Tom Reed with a good reaction. Well, that's the second time we've seen that play, and this time Fraley unloaded it. Not bad. Shafton, of course, is a fine quarterback for Baldwin High School in a couple years past. And he can unload the ball. Second and 10, Eagles, Glenville State 14-yard line. This is one, you know, you, you, you hate to tell them don't score, but you don't want the other guy to think you're running up the score. Robinson, snap, fake, pitch. Here's Chris Wright hitting the corner at the 10, inside the 10 to about the five, six yard line. A gain of eight is gonna bring up third down and two. Fraley with a good block out there on the corner. In fact, uh, he got such a good block, the defensive man a little slow getting up. Reggie Garland checks back in as Alfonso Harris comes out, Tristan Belzer comes in and Dexter Dawson comes out. Third down, about two yards to go for a first down, six yards to go for a touchdown. And as Freddie mentioned, the shadow's getting a little longer. Robinson checking off at the line, takes the snap, hands it off, keeps it, pitches it. Here comes Shaft and Fraley into the end zone. Well, there's a way to cap off your senior year. Fraley in from six yards out. Only 59 seconds into the fourth quarter. And that makes it 51 to 13. Well, the Eagles have put a lot of points on the board earlier this season. And this one being no exception. 
Reed Haley will try it one more time. Try for number seven. He had to have two shots at the last one. This one he pumps up. It is good. It's on to the porch of the Lupton building. And as we break away for a commercial, it is the Eagles 52, Glenville State 13. Back with you in 30 seconds. Sometimes there's magic in a melody. Certain music just touches. Probably tired. Muscles, the muscles are tightening, Ooh, I'm sure. Ooh, 52 of them things. Tell you what you were speaking of. You had to do. <laughs> you were speaking of Shafton Fraley and being from Baldwin County. Baldwin County opens up Quad A playoff football this coming Friday night at International City Stadium in Warner Robins. They will be there to play Warner Robins. Yes. So if you want to see some good high school football, you can come out and see that one this coming Friday night. And next weekend, uh, we will not have a game on. However, as I said uh, Friday night, stay tuned for further developments. Here's the kickoff. Eric Smith puts it into the end zone. Made it that time. Eric Smith on the kickoff. Kicking with the wind now in the fourth quarter. Okay, now let's check out and see who's going to be out there for us. 13,179. 13,179? That's not a bad number. Of Georgia Southern University football. Okay. Chad Nybert back out there. Well, we do have somebody new. Charlie Burt getting into the ball game. The senior from Winter Haven, Florida. Number 57 on the right side is going to be Anthony Battle. Thomas Plant, Lee Brooks up front. First and 10 from the 20 for Glenville State. Snap, inside handoff again, and hit at the line. Oh my goodness gracious, there were five blue shirts. Led by Chad Nybert, number 58. Who is in right now at middle linebacker? Thought they think they might have diagnosed that one and uh, figured out that Mr. Hartsfield is going to get the ball. Well, they'll bring it back up to the original line of scrimmage, so it's no gain. Francis Williams, Derek Austin, Danny Britt comes back in now off a of free safety, playing a linebacker. Marco Bradham, Rob Stockton, and on the far side, I believe that is Eric Thigpen. Yep. Second down and 10. Otis goes back. Eagles break out of a formation. Here's the snap. Here's the pass. Oh, he's got pressure. Throwing incomplete. Danny Britt knocked it down. Otis pass broken up by intended for Chris George, but actually Britt and Stockton were a lot closer to that play than George was. And Stockton was going for the interception. Didn't quite get there, but it was awfully close. He got up feeling like he should have had it. Third down and 10. And again, we'll watch Coach Rodriguez. He's just standing on the sidelines holding his head. Here's the snap. Otis goes back, a quick pass out into the flat, completed for about seven, eight yards to, who is that? Number 88, their tight end, that's who that is. Walter Wilbon, the senior out of Fort Myers, Florida. Derek Austin on the stop. Let's see if they give him seven. They'll give him eight. It's going to be fourth down and two. Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to trying to find a way to say this nicely, but fourth down and two. I think I might have gone for it. Brian Fisher. As it is, Fisher is going to go back to punt. Let's see whether or not the Eagles will go back and try for it. There's the snap. Nope. Going to be a return. High. Wobbly coming down. Fair catch. Dexter Dawson at about the 49-yard line, and now we got a flag. Yep. All right. We're going to see probably several of these out of frustration for Glenville State for the remainder of this game. They came in with a record of 8-1. and one. They're not used to taking a licking like this. Of course, they stepped up in classification as far as opponents go by taking on Georgia Southern. They came into today's game at 8-1, and one, but they have not played any competition the quality of Georgia Southern. And it's a personal foul call. So the punt which came down at our 49-yard line. Number 6, Troy State, 28. Number 21, Alcorn State, 27. Fourth quarter score. Let's see where that's going to put it. UT Chattanooga, 13. 
How about the 36-yard line of Glenville State? Number 12, Appalachian State, 12. Saw Will Roberts. Western Carolina, 7. Come into the game. Also, Maurice Bing. Number 23, ranked Costra, 41. Here's the snap. Joe Dupree is in there at quarterback, and he slipped getting started. Went down about a two-yard loss on the play. That's Joe Dupree's first showing since the third game of the year. I guess it was. He went out against Marshall. And he was really expected to be the quarterback for the year this year and really be the big senior leader. Injuries decimated our quarterback scores, both with Charles Bostic and with Joe Dupree. Charles, of course, had hoped that he'd get another year of eligibility. Dupree takes it, wants to go back. He's got a man open. He doesn't see him, but he's got a man flying. It is Will Roberts, incomplete, knocked down. Fraley was wide open in the middle of the field. He was trying to go to Will Roberts on the play, though. Incomplete, third down at about 13. Third down, 13. And Reggie Garland is in there. At tight end, Jason Mitchell. Redshirt freshman out of Southland Academy in Plains is also in the ball game. Garland comes out. Here's the snap. Straight ahead. Tyrone Stevens up the middle at the 35. Cuts out at the 30. Inside at the 25, and he's got the first down. Oh, and we got a flag on the play. All that running, and let's see if it's going to amount to anything. It's down at the 24-yard line. Well, you got senior Joe Dupree handing off to senior... Stevens and Illegal use of hands again. both of whom were banged up pretty bad. Well, let's see. They're going to let the run stand. It happened at the end of the play. So give him uh, 14, 15 yards. Give him about 15 yards, but mark down 10. Bring it back 10. And it's going to bring up still third down, but now third down and about oh, eight yards to go. 11 minutes and 20 seconds left to go in the ball game. 52 to 13 in favor of the Eagles. And somebody just tuned in and said, is this a replay of last night's game? Out wide to the left, Corey Joyner, freshman out of Authority High School. Here's the snap, Dupree goes back. He's gonna run at the 35 to 30, the 25 to 20. Cuts outside, hit from behind at about the 16 yard line. And another flag on the field. And now the crowd is really getting upset about it, too. Three tackle by Junior Lawrence, number 38. An 18-yard pickup on the play. But let's see what this one's all about. We're going to need another stat sheet just for the dead ball foul. Personal foul. And once again against the Personal Eagles. Foul against Georgia Southern. Give them a pickup on the play of 18 yards. Dupree looked like he was moving pretty good on that one. But it's also going to be a 15-yard penalty. So it moves it back to the 31-yard line. Now, wait a minute. If it was a dead ball foul, don't get the first down. It's still going to be third down. Okay. No, check it. First down. Whoops, we got to reset the chains then. That's right. They made the first down, but then at the right. end of the at the end of the play, dead ball. That's what I said. Dead ball foul. foul. All right, first and ten Eagles at the 31. Dupree sprints out, cuts in at the 30, the 25, the 20. He's got the blocks. He is gonna go all the way. Now let's see if there's a flag. 31 yards, and Joe Dupree looks as happy as if it was the first game of the season. And all the teammates rush out to congratulate him. Everyone happy for Joe Dupree. What a bad break for him this year getting injured. But everyone gives him a big hand as he comes to the sideline. Great, great run. Well, I said he looked like he was moving pretty good on that one. 
And Reed Haley gets another chance, bangs it up, bangs it home. Well, let me see if I can do this right. If that's a touchdown and extra point, it is now the Eagles, 59, Glenville State, 13, and we'll be back with more right after this. 36 is where you're playing. Tim Foley. Eight against Tennessee Tech. 9 to 13. 24 points in the first quarter. First half. Uh, it would have been bad, wouldn't it? A couple of touchdowns. Three touchdowns in the third quarter. A pair here in the fourth quarter. Keeping off for Georgia. I don't know what, what else you can say. Yes, and all those push ups. Oh, goodness. When do you guys get to quit? Number nine, Kevin Waterfield for the Pioneers. Eric Smith on the kick. Bangs this one. Oh, I think he got into that. Chris George at the goal line. To the 10, to the 15, and that's about it, to the 15. Chris George on the return. Chris Wilson out of Southwest High School in Macon, Georgia. Made sure that he did not go any further. First and 10 for the Pioneers at their own 15-yard line. Well, did the guys do the push-ups at the end of those? points? No, they didn't. Oh, oh that's okay. what you're saying, Brian. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Uh, whip, whip out on whip us. Out, whip oh, out. Yeah. Go down there and get on them. Former cheerleaders can do that. <laughs> uh, However, television hosts should not. <laughs> First and 10. And, uh, well, I thought Scott Otis might be done for the day. He's in there. Snap. Handoff inside. Waterfield with it. Up to the 20, the 25, to 30, and he's got good yardage. Lee Brooks chased him down from behind along with Chad Nybert. But Waterfield all the way out to the 31. Let's see where they mark it. 36, rather. A 21-yard ramble. Not bad. About one of their better runs, as a matter of fact. And also, that is their... 12th first down, 13th, 13th first down. And needless to say, the defense playing a little looser than what you would normally expect. Oh, yeah. What a 59 to 13, yeah. same play. And this time, Danny Britt says, no, nah, come here. And Danny Britt knocked him down after a gain of about two. Getting to see some new members out there. Yeah, Nybert's out there. Thomas Plant's in, Lee Brooks, Derek Reeves. On the Battle, State, Anthony Brooks, Battle. However, the defensive backs, oh, we do have a new defensive back in here. Hold on, Andre Rogers, I believe that is, from Duluth. The high, uh, freshman out of Duluth High School is in now. There's the snap. Here's a pitch, and Waterfield's going to try to get around the end. He's got some good blocking ahead of him, and he looks like he's got enough for the first down. Marco Eight or nine Bradham. yards. Marco Bradham on the stop on the far side. But well, I think you're right. It looks like he's out over the first down marker. And it is. Our referee this afternoon, Jim Jackson, says he's got uh, enough for a first down. Give him nine on that one. And it'll be first and ten. Anthony Battle comes out. Scott Davis, I believe, went back in. He did. First and ten at the 46-yard line. And now Hartsfield comes back in, and Hartsfield will take a crack at running it. Gets it on the outside, and a flag on the play. Derek Reeves he collared him and just knocked him down. Yeah, he grabbed him by the back of his jersey and just held on. He said, come here. He got four yards on the play, but let's see what the call is. Marco Bradham signaling it's against them. Illegal block against Glenville State. Scott Otis says, what have we got to do in order to make this work? Mark it on back. Illegal block, 10 yards. Illegal use of the hands against pushing the, the Pushing the back is what they call that. 10 yards, back to the 39, still first down. Now first down in about 17, close to 18, actually. Nine minutes and 15 seconds left to go. And you notice I stopped saying in this game, 59 to 13. Otis takes the snap. End around to Chris George. He is going to get a couple of yards. Ooh, and then he gets hit by about three blue shirts all at one time. Yeah, he did a high hurdle over the first would-be blocker. 
Charlie Burt and Lee Brooks turned him back in, and Danny Britt knocked him down at the 44-yard line. A pickup on the play, though, about six yards. It's going to be second and 11. Well, I'm noticing the lights have been turned on. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, we'll have to watch and see which way the, uh, the shadows turn now. The shadows turn. Wasn't that a program at one time? Second down and 11, clock moving with 823. Pitch, Waterfield trying to get outside, gets hit, slowed up. It was uh, Scott Davis who slowed him up, and then Rob Stockton and a couple of other guys came up to knock him down. Chad Nybert got a hand in there. Gain of about three on the play, third down now, and eight yards to go for a first down. Well, there's an interesting store, uh, score, Appalachian State, the winner. 12 to 7 over, over Western, Western Carolina. Yeah. Good game. Mountaineers and the Catamounts. Third down and eight as Scott Otis takes it, fakes it, wants a pass. Charlie Burt in there, hit from behind, a sack by Scott Davis. Davis just blew past. Well, it was number 74, the guy who came in, Shea Love. I was, just, I was just waiting to see whether or not he was going to go back and have the ball stripped again because he almost had his arm cocked back ready to go and release the ball, but Otis wasn't able to get to do that. And fortunately for him, he didn't. Scott Davis with the sack, a loss of four, fourth down and 12. And Fisher, who has punted, I've lost track of how many times he's punted, but it's been a bunch. This could be a good place for a fake, though. You know what? They've got Reed there as an up back. No fake. A punt. Fisher bumps that one. And Dexter Dawson says he'll take it. Did not signal for a fair catch. Got it to the 23. It'll be first and 10 Eagles at our 23-yard line. And we'll be back with the final six minutes and 42 seconds of this game right after this. 30. Introducing American Roads, a great new collection that hits you where you live. Seeing some new faces in there. And I have not been able to pick up who that center is. Let me see if I've got him on this card. Yep, Sed Thornton, number 51, is in there at center. And we have all sorts of other new names. Dupree, however, still in at quarterback, takes it, rolls it, wants to pitch it, wants to keep it. Got a good block out to the 30-yard line where he's knocked down there by Tom Reed. There must be two guys named Tom Reed out there. Hadley is in. Stacy Moses in, number 77. Roy Clayton, the sophomore out of Jenkins County over in Millen. Jason Mitchell, number 75. From Southland, making another appearance. Stacy Moses is the only starting lineman who's still in there. A gain on the play of about six, second down and four, snap, and it's Tyrone Stevens. And lost his footing and went down at about the 38-yard line. Somebody got a heel on him. A market at the 38. A pickup of, let's see, seven, eight yards on the play. Nine yards on the play. First down, Eagles at their own 38. 5.56 left to go here in this ball game. 59 to 13. Eagles out in front. Corey Joyner comes out wide to the left. Freshman, 5'9", 160 pounds out of Doherty High School in Albany. Here's the snap. Dupree keeps it. Wants a roll out. He did not get a block on the corner, but he got a couple of yards out of it anyway. Out to about the 30, 44, I'm sorry, the 44-yard line. Made that yardage on his own, tackled by Tommy Williams. Got seven yards on the play. Maurice Bing comes back in. Maurice, a freshman out of Groves High School in Savannah. He'll go top to the right and down here at the, uh, at Belzer is top right. Here's the snap, handoff, Stevens bangs away out over the 45 to about the 46-yard line. 
gain of about three on the play. And that's the plan right now. Coach Towers would love just to keep this drive going, stay on the ground, pick up first downs, and run the clock on now. Willie Ellington coming in, number 34. He's a redshirt freshman out of Shamrock High School up in Decatur. 5'7", 170 pounder. And we'll check and see who that is on the right. Here's the snap. Here is Dupree. He's got the running room at the 50, inside the 50, still on his feet, and he got tripped up at about the 45-yard line. Almost broke away that time before he's finally tripped up by number 13, Steve Stoffel. And he got about nine yards on that, and another Eagle first down. First and 10 Eagles at the 44-yard line of Glenville State. The clock continues to move with now 424. And as I said that, the clock stopped. What happened? <laughs> oh, they had to move the sticks. I'm sorry. First and 10 Eagles. That's why the clock stopped. Snap. Dupree looks, looks, pitches. Here's Ellington getting a chance. Gets inside at the 40, the 35, the 30. He wants a touchdown at the 20. He's going to go all the way into the end zone. <laughs> Exclamation point. Willie Ellington from 44 yards out. And I guarantee you that was a sheer leap of joy on that young man's part. Touchdown run by Willie Ellington, number 34. 44 yards, and that puts it up to 65 to 13. Willie Ellington, a 5'7 freshman. Reed Haley to do the extra point honors, puts it up. He just set a new record. Haley puts the 66th point on the board. As they come back up the field, four minutes and 11 seconds remaining, 65, 66 to 13, and we'll be back right after this. It all runs together. Time for our jobs. The new scoring record for the Georgia Southern Eagles, 66 points in a game, the old one being 63 against Marshall back in 1989. And that's a and team Margaret, that, you wouldn't, that Margaret, you wouldn't guess. Margaret and I were here for that <laughs> one, too. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Eric Smith gets another shot at it. Hope we got enough time on these tapes. This thing seems to be gone forever. No, I'm kidding. We got enough time. Eric Smith gets another chance. Chris George will be deep. Well, if somebody would have asked me, was this possible, I don't know if I would have said that I thought it could have. And you can't tell anybody to just slow down and don't do something like that. Well, you put kids in that haven't had a chance to play all year, and they're going to do their best to prove and show themselves good. Line drive down the left field line, and it went out of bounds. Could be Eric's getting tired. I don't know about Eric, but I know that Dan is. And when you see folks like number 34, Willie Ellington, run and score like that, you're looking at the future of Georgia Southern football because he's a freshman. And if exuberance that he had on that play scoring that touchdown is any indication of the kind of guy he's going to be playing in the future, he's going to be fun to watch. A redshirt freshman got his chance, and he did it. All right. We're going to see some new linemen out here. Goodness gracious, look at that number 79. Tom Curry, 6'6", 310-pound sophomore. Offhand, I'd say Glenville State's got a pretty good future, too. Scott Otis still in there. Inside handoff, here comes Hartsfield. There goes Hartsfield. Might have got two yards on the play as the Eagles with more fresh faces in there. Chad Nybert. And now we also see uh, Jermaine Howard, the senior out of Cedar Shoals in Athens, is in there. Into the ball game, D.A. Pope, junior out of Irwin County in Osceola, will be in the defensive line. Second down and nine, pitch. Here goes Hartsfield again, trying to get outside, and might not have gotten but about two yards on that. On the stop for Georgia Southern, number nine, Derek Austin. 
Number 14, Rob. Derek Austin and Rob Stockton knock him down at the 39, so a gain of uh, actually three on that play. Third down now. Marco Bradham, Rob Stockton, Andre Rogers still out there, along with Francis Williams, Derek Austin, Chad Nybert, Danny Britt, Charlie Burt. Patrick Almond is into the ball game. Sophomore out of Noonan High School, making his first appearance today. Third down, call it about six. Here's a pitch. Here's Waterfield trying to get outside. Who did he get stuck? As he hit the 40-yard line, I'm not sure of who that was that bounced in there, but I mean, it, it was Eric Thigpen, because they're congratulating him. Thigpen came up and really put a nail. No, Charlie Burt, I'm sorry, 57, not 27. A gain of about a yard, and we're going to see another Glenville State punt. This guy could have a good punting average by the end of this game. And we'll look to see who's going to come in at quarterback. I imagine Grady Blanchard's going to get a shot with 2.15 left to go in the game. Snap. Fisher kicks it. Ooh, a nice one. Dexter Dawson says, there it is. Takes it at the 25. Ooh, tried to get outside and went down at the 29. And Dexter knows that he's going to be out of the ball game because we're going to get a whole new group of people. I'm looking to see... There it is. Grady Blanchard's coming in at quarterback. So all three Eagle quarterback quarterbacks have gotten a shot at taking snaps today. Blanchard. Of course, with 66 to 13 and 202 left to go in the ball game. We may get through this with, with just the amount of paper we got, huh? And Grady Blanchard uh, hails from Evans High School. He's a freshman. And he's a good one. 5'11", 187. Tyrone Stevens up the middle. The 35 to 40. Tries to cut outside. Gets hit from behind. Fumbled. Let's see what the call is. Tyrone Stevens on the carry for Georgia. Tyrone State. with about a 15-yard run, but now they say if the if the he looks like as he came up over the ball and was hit that he basically flipped and came down hard on that leg. Oh, that's not going to help. Out to the 45-yard line, so a 16-yard pickup, but Tyrone might have. Gone to the well one one too many times on that. Of course, he had a bad leg and he was not really expected to play that much. But being a senior and the last game uh, in front of the home folks, you want to do good. And we look forward to seeing you in 1995 as we continue the. Will Roberts coming in along with Corey Joyner. this season. Don't forget Georgia Southern finishes its regular season on the road next weekend in Charleston against the Bulldogs of the Citadel. And meanwhile, Tyrone Stevens is getting some attention. He really came down hard when he was hit as he was running with the ball. He flipped around and looked like he hyperextended that right knee. At least the way that it looked as he hit the ground appeared that way. He may have just fell on his back and got the wind knocked out of him, but the way everyone's gathering around him, they're pretty concerned. He's had a good career here with the Eagles. And the uh, there are only a few fans left. This is where you get to the point where you figure that it's been a secret meeting and it's all over and everybody's left except you. Well, as it is, it will be a sweet ride home for all the Georgia Southern fans. Next week, of course, the Citadel. And if you've been following it along, the Eagles, knowing that uh, a 7-4 and four record a couple of years ago did not put them into the playoffs, but this year, and as uh, Coach Stower said, they need a little help from a few other teams in order to uh, have the possibility of making the playoffs. And that is Coach Stowers, who just walked out of the huddle around Tyrone Stevens. Well, it has been an interesting football game. 
Joe Dupree got in and uh, actually got a touchdown run, so we're pretty sure that his knee is fairly sound. However, being a senior, this is his final game here at, at Allen E. Paulson Stadium. The Southwest Macon player who came down here from uh, the University of Georgia and made a very big impact on this team. And Georgia Southern's band is now making its way back over. They announced at halftime that they were going to do a, quote, command performance of their halftime show that's been so popular this year that they didn't get to do during the halftime of all the good 60s numbers ah, that we okay. all like, the Motown sound. The Motown sound. So they're going to entertain the crowd after the game, and now we're seeing Stevens being able to get off the field anyway with a little bit of help. Once again, favoring that right knee. Yep. Well, Tyrone got his touchdown. Blanchard in there at quarterback, takes it, pitches it. And it's Will, uh, yeah, I forgot who he was. Will Roberts, number 80 on the carry. And he looks like he might have got 10 more yards. They have got out there to the first down mark. He's going to be awfully close. Maybe he, short by half a foot or so. Another redshirt freshman out of Catholic High in Pensacola. And they said he's about a short. Well, give him 10 yards, though, because you can't get any closer than that and not give him 10. Corey Joyner comes out. And it was Maurice Bing who went in on second down at about a foot with a minute and four seconds left to go. Here's the snap. Blanchard pitches it out. Ooh, pitched it behind Jonathan Richardson, and it looks like he got back on it, though. But a loss of about nine yards, maybe 10 yards on the play. Whoops, maybe worse than that. How about 12 yards? And said Thornton is down, number 51. Yep, the, and the able center. To get back up. Yep. I think, think he just got a bell rung on that one. Into the ball game, Stuart Dixon. The junior out of Dublin High, and he may just come in at center, and I think they're going to. They're going to take said Thornton out of there. Don't risk anybody. He looked like an ankle might have turned out under him. A loss of 11 on the play, and it's going to be third down, but with 52 seconds left, it may not make any difference at this point. Anthony Austin, redshirt freshman from Dooley County out of Vienna, comes in. This does remind me a little bit about of last night. Last night, uh, Coach Collins at uh, Stratford got to play all the ninth graders. Coach Stowers is getting to play all the redshirt freshmen. Third down and 11, Blanchard with the ball, needs a block, he won't need it now. He's at the 50, the 40, the inside the 40, and out of bounds at about the 36 yard line. I don't believe this. 26 yards on the carry and a first down. <laughs> Everybody's wanting to get in on the action. Well, that's one way to get your name in, the, in today's record book. 26 yards, a first down at the 36-yard line. Clock stopped with 27 seconds left to go. And, and Blanchard would love to probably get in for a score here. Five so, oh, please. So he could say that he was quarterback in the highest the scoring team. <laughs> no, I think you're going to see the play called take there a knee. Go. All right. Lose two, take a knee, and let's get this thing over with. With 20 seconds left to go, there will not be a need to run another play. And I'm sure that Glenville State is probably as appreciative as, as anybody. What a football game. The final score, the Eagles, 66 and Glenville State 13, and we're going to be back with a very short post game right after these messages. <laughs> 66 to 13. Dan Jaskula, Fred Hester, my lovely wife Margaret doing statistics. David Wood doing an excellent job upstairs manning the camera. My nephew Daniel Wright. Fred's daughter, Carrie Hester. Brian Prell sitting in with us today. Good to have you with us. And the band doing the Motown sound. Margaret, what do you think? Oh, goodness, I just saw these numbers. You're not going to believe this. Yeah, let's do, let's do Glenville State first. 
For Glenville State, four guys actually wound up carrying the ball. Scott Otis, nine carries for 28 yards. Juan Hartsfield, 15 carries for 37 yards. David Waterfield, seven for 41. And Chris George, one time for six yards. So they actually did wind up with plus yardage the, uh, the first half. They were not in that good a shape. 112 yards on the ground. Through the air, they didn't do bad. 9 of 14 for 176 yards. No, wait a minute. You didn't add them up. Oh, my goodness. 121. 176 yards. 200, 288 total yards. But the passing... 41. 20 completions out of 40, 30. Oh, that's right, there was only one line there, okay. Well, he didn't do bad then. 20, uh, 20 pass completions out of 30 attempts for 176 yards, 288 total yards, 14 first downs. They got 10 first downs in the second half, not bad at all. Had nine penalties for 77 yards, two fumbles and lost them both. And uh, Glenville State, not bad, 288 yards. I think you'd take that on any day. Okay, here comes the litany of the Saints, folks. Kenny Robinson, 16 for 128. Now, now keep with me on this. Chris Wright, 10 for 124. Chad Holmes, 4 for 21. Marlo Worthen, 7 for 74. Roderick Russell, 6. 6 carries for 109 yards. Dexter Dawson, 1 carry for 1 yard. Shame. Tyrone Stevens, 7 carries for 69 yards. Shafton Fraley, 2 for 6. Joe Dupree, four six carries for 69 yards here's the one that i love willie ellington one carry 44 yards will roberts one carry for 10 yards grady blanchard three carries for 13 yards on the ground 668 yards that wasn't a ground attack that was a small war in the air, three completions out of nine for 54 yards, 722 total yards for Georgia Southern, 32 first downs, pretty even, 15 in the first half, 17 in the second, nine penalties for 110 yards, that got a little crazy, one fumble, and they held on to it. Let me give you a quickie on the score rundown. Kenny Robinson from six yards out, Kenny Robinson from one yard out, Haley with the first of his extra points. He set a new record today, folks, for extra points. 14 to nothing at the end of the first half, at the end of the first quarter. I did it again. Worthen from seven yards out. Haley the extra point. And then Glenville State got on the board with a three-yard pass. Jackson from Otis, Buffington with the extra point. It was 21 to seven. With no time left on the clock, and Rich Rodriguez, the uh, head coach for Glenville State, having a small fit, Reed Haley from 35 yards out on the field goal, 24 to seven at halftime. Hey, it was still a ball game. But the third quarter, well, it kind of deteriorated. Roderick Russell from 52 yards out. Haley again, make it 31 to seven. Mosby, a 54 yard touchdown pass from Otis. It was 31 to 13. Hey, it, it fell off a little there. But then Russell again from 14 yards out. Haley hit the uh, PAT. And Tyrone Stevens got his touchdown from 21 yards out. It was 45 to 13 at the end of the third quarter. After that, it got a little silly. Fraley from six yards out. Dupree from 31 yards out. And as we told you, Willie Ellington, one carry, 44 yards. Reed Haley good on every one of the extra points to set the new record for GSU. The final, 66 to 13. Well, this has got to probably sound kind of bad, but I liked it. I, you know, it's the kind of game that I like to see, and especially when you're the guys who are on the long end of the 66 points. Well, that wraps up our third year of doing Georgia Southern University football, and I think I can speak for uh, just about everybody, but I won't. Freddie, your thoughts, sir? Well, I've really enjoyed the season. Looking forward to hopefully seeing Georgia Southern be able to beat the Citadel this coming week and perhaps get into the playoffs and be a, a good comeback for Georgia Southern. Especially after a rather disastrous start. But uh, it was a good ball game. We hope that you have enjoyed it. As I said, we're going to take at least a week off. However, 
Uh, there are some plans afoot that we may return with some playoff games for the high school folks. So you'll just have to stay tuned to Channel 64, and we promise you, we will tell you. Don't forget ACC basketball coming to us in January, live and only on TV 64 Sports. Dan Jaskula for Fred Hester, my lovely wife Margaret for David Wood, Daniel Wright, Kerry Hester, Brian Prell, and the cast of thousands at TV 64. We thank you so much for watching. It's been a great football year. Still a little bit more to come. But until we meet again, good night and God bless.